I've pulled out a very old unseen video for the first time ever. And there are secrets in this that I want to share with you, which will change your life by just watching this video. So this video is from the 1930s. Look at these people. They are walking in the New York streets. But what have you noticed? There is not a single person looking fat in this video. Can you see any obesity? People are running, walking at fast pace. Do you know why? Because there was less conveniences in those days. Less taxi, less metro, less phones, less everything else. So you had to take charge and walk everywhere and do everything yourself. Now many of you will say this video is from America. They are not our ancestors. So now I'm going to show you a 1960s video from Bombay. And this is our ancestors here in India. Slim, trim, walking. And even look at the Mumbai policeman. He is also slim and trim. Shows something about lifestyle diseases and the conveniences of life and the surplusness and processing of food that is making everybody fatter and unhealthier. Now, why am I showing you this video? You see, in the old days, you had to walk to the bus station. You had to walk to your worker place. I remember my grandfather used to walk five kilometers to the courthouse every day. He had a cycle, but he would go walking because he was in his formal attire. So he said if he went on cycle, he started sweating. But if he went walking, he wouldn't sweat that much. So five kilometers to five kilometers back. In today's world, where are we walking even one kilometer? If you're walking, we're saying it is an exercise. I am trying to tell you, like I tell all the film stars, if they want to burn fat, they have to walk. Because when you walk, the intensity of your heart rate, even when walking fast, is lower than that of exercise. It's called non-exercise adaptive thermogenesis. And do you know what this thermogenesis means? It means to burn. To burn what? Fat in your body. You see, if you start running, if you start exercising, you're not burning fat. You're burning muscle glycogen, liver glycogen, the carbohydrate. So when you start doing stuff that our grandparents and ancestors were doing, this video is so amazing. Not a single person has a fat waistline. So hard work, not exercise, was the key secret. And you and I today are living in the world of conveniences. Therefore, we have so much of convenience that our life has become so convenient, we have given it disease. That is why today we don't die from communicable diseases. In 1930s, people died from communicable diseases, infectious diseases. But today we have lifestyle diseases, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, uh, fatty liver, you have uh, kidney problems, you have skin problems, you have autoimmune disorders. All of them, all of them are related to the conveniences of today and the advancements of medicine. How medicine advancement can cause lifestyle disease? Psychologically, you believe that you can afford to fall sick because you can pay money to take medicines to take care of your heart disease, your diabetes or your blood pressure or even liver issues and kidney issues. So when you think about today's world and the conveniences and the lazy factor imprinted upon us, we all consume this laziness. My request to you is become a producer of your own health. How do you produce your own health? You have to do sweating by walking. If you walk more than 10,000 steps a day, and you don't need to do it at one shot, walk around your house, do cleaning, cooking, move your vegetables around the house. I yesterday did gardening and moved 40 buckets of water to water my entire terrace. The idea was I was eating too many mangoes that I ordered at a click of a button. I can afford the mango, I can click on the mango, and I cannot eat one mango, I can eat four mangoes at one time. What's stopping me? Nothing. The pleasures of life, the convenience of life is going to give me lifestyle diseases. So I have to do the pain of keeping myself healthy and the simplest pain, the least pain is walking. So why don't you share or comment with me what is your journey in walking? How often do you walk? How many steps you do? And one secret, walk 15 minutes after breakfast, walk 15 minutes after lunch, walk 15 minutes after dinner. In this alone, you will get 6,000 steps. And then take your best friend out or take your mobile phone, walk and talk as much as you can. 
I never take a call sitting down. I always try to walk and talk. So I get like 100, 200 steps. If it's a long call, even more steps. Get yourself a standing desk and keep moving all the time. I wish I could do this video standing. I would do that standing too.